welcome again. I'm Sean and you're watching Red 11 Live. In a moment, we're going to be interviewing Mike and Aaron from PCAR Talk. We're going to be here for a little bit, so you may as well get some alcohol down you. Yeah? I know I will be. A uh, little bit of an update, if you hadn't heard or seen, or you can tell, I'm back at my 911, which is fantastic news. It was uh, in for paint with Colorcraft, those legends that are over Wellingborough Way. Um, if you have any sort of paint that needs doing on cars and you're in that kind of area, bell them up. They're awesome. Okay. So without much further ado, they should be here. Yes, they are. I'm getting them on. As said before, any questions you have, please feel free to type them in below in the little question mark and we will get them up and running and answer them. Wicked. Look at this. What's up? Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that mustache. What's up? My, my mustache. Look at that beard. It's beautifully shaped there. How you doing, Aaron? How you doing, Thank Mike? You. You're doing both well. Good. How are you? Not too bad, man. Not too bad. This is the first time I've actually interviewed two people at the same time. It's like a, like an audible menage a trois. Menage a trois. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, okay. yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, it's a three-way. Got... It is a, It's a. It's a. It's a fatal three-way. Um, <laughs> how many of uh, have you got your drinks with you as well? I know it's only three p.m., but hopefully you, you're on it already. Yeah, we're actually hydrating. We drank yeah. like three or four bottles of whiskey last night, we're so. <laughs> Uh, well, happy belated Fourth of July again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Cool. Um, so, um, a couple of things, I suppose, or, or to start, really. Mm -hmm. For those that are unfamiliar, and you should be ashamed of yourselves, but those who are unfamiliar, tell us a little bit about P Car Talk. I, let, I always talk a lot, so I'll let Aaron no, go ahead. Of course and go. <laughs> he's so. right, you know. <laughs> no, he's not. Yeah, I monopolize the, the the podcast, so I'll 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 flip roles for a second. He, he's a outsource. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll give you the background on how how everything kind of started for us. Um, it was mainly a phone conversation, and us listening to podcasts and not really finding a Porsche specific type thing we wanted to listen to. It was kind of Porsche mixed with other things, and which was okay, but we wanted something. All right, Porsche, Porsche, Porsche news. Didn't matter what it was, just kind of get that fix in there. We can listen to it at work or whatever we were doing. Didn't have to really pay attention too much. If we wanted to, we could. Still, you know, interesting, that type of thing. And he asked if there was something, and I was like, I don't think so. And he, I was like, I asked him if he'd heard anything, though. So that was kind of the, let's get it started. And now was when Mike was like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> there, was, there wasn't any, like, I don't know, should we do this? Should we not do this? Okay. Yeah, it's just slippery slope after that. Like a month you later, know how it goes. We're in. I mean, I already had some of the stuff, so that didn't. It it started happening, and we go, okay, let's try this. First few episodes, they were a little, little straight laced, I guess. A little kind of like all our notes were like note for note, and now it's a lot a ton better as far as getting to know Mike and Mike getting to know me. That helps. Yeah, the flow is a lot better. Yeah. Obviously, like anything from the start, you know, you start to do start to spend more time together you start to learn each other like dynamics off i guess camera and mic and then it kind of translates well when you get back on because then you have that friendship dynamic as well as like a professional type of thing going on so it's it works out really well um you know we've gotten a lot closer over the last year and a half since we started too because of that and, i mean because we want to do well and we are covering a lot of the same stuff when we go to have guests or we go to events anyways. Um, so you start to build all those relationships and you start to get, you know, you spend so much vacation time together and you start to, you know, yeah, once, each you, other once on. you share a tent with him. Yeah. You start to, you know, there's like a brotherhood. It starts, you know, almost a lot of, you know, there's a lot of camaraderie there. So it's kind of like we screw mm -hmm. around with each other a lot. So it's kind of funny. Yeah. I mean, we have similar backgrounds too. So that helps. Well, yeah, exactly. I was just going to touch upon that because uh, it's not very well known, but you know, I've been I've been an avid listener, pretty much. I think I think I started listening when episode four kicked in, but then I backtracked oh, and listened to the first three yeah. episodes. Yeah, so I was I was one of the, I was pretty much from the start, I'd say. Um, yeah. And I remember you talking about you've both served uh, in the military uh, separately. Mm -hmm. Um, but mm -hmm. it's yeah. interesting that you you had that in the background as well, and 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 there's a lot of ex-military ex-services that kind of find their way into the the, the, the Porsche scene yeah. as such you know me being a, a former as well um, mm -hmm. and it's quite interesting that you kind of found each other 
even though at yeah. the start you didn't really like yeah. from what because Aaron used to drive uh, a BMW back in the day an E36 was it I had uh, well, I had that E36 and had an E46 before I had a couple of BMWs I had, a, I had a 944 back in the day that caught on fire but you know, I think, <laughs> so that kind of ruined my Porsche Porsche experience for a little bit but but it's nice you know, to see that you're not as misguided anymore. So that's that's positive. It's, yeah, yeah exactly right. Sold all the BMWs, don't own one. So he leveled yeah. up. <laughs> but, oh, completely. <laughs> uh, but that's the thing, you know. A lot of people think you've probably been together for a lot longer, working together at least. Um, yeah. But it's it's not been that long. What about what two and a half years? Maybe you've you've known each other, if that. Yeah, two and a half years. Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty we, much. Pretty much, yeah. We've known each other about a year prior to the whole, you know, podcast thing, and then we just kind of went after it. Just like anything, I'm sure, you know, with Ren Eleven, um, you know, your your growth that you've seen, it just kind of starts, you know, with like a little thing, and then it starts to snowball, and you're like, oh, hey, I can do this, I can do that, I can do, and it just kind of opens your your mind to you're like, oh, I can start doing all these additional things as well. I, you know, when you first start, you don't even realize it, and I know you and I have talked offline a lot about it, and it was like it's cool to just start doing it. You know, everybody, you know, out there, and this isn't like a motivational speech or anything, but just, just start it. You'll figure your way. If you want to do something, just start it out and don't worry about being perfect. Don't worry about, you'll figure it out. You'll get better as time goes on. You know, just, I encourage anybody who, who is passionate or anything out there that they want to do, regardless of what it is, doesn't necessarily have to make you money or monetary but if it makes you happy and you just want to do it and you want to put some positive energy out in the world like knock it out and knock and do it you know oh, completely and that's the thing you kind of end up not maybe not even finding your voice but finding a way to get your voice heard in a more comfortable way after you've done it a few times like like you said at the start i, I didn't i'll be honest and this is not me brown nosing because you know i don't really like either of you uh, but at the start <laughs> you were you were really um you know, it felt like you were just quite relaxed with each other. And I love the dynamic of, of Aaron kind of sometimes coming up with a solution to something and, and not outsmarting you, but kind of putting you in your place very politely. Yeah. Like. But it just seemed yeah. natural. Um, mm -hmm. And as you say, though, that natural ability and comfort comes through once you're, you're, you're comfortable as such uh, expressing whatever you want to express. It's, it's wonderful. To Absolutely. Hear. Mm -hmm. and, and Absolutely. Kind Thank of, you. That's what kind of makes Picard Talk for me a, a really easy to get into podcast because it just feels mm -hmm. like two lads chatting. Um, yeah, and that's and that was our that was our pretty pretty much our game plan from the beginning. That's what we wanted. You'd be that third friend that just sitting at the same table. And I think yeah. the cool thing is, that's obviously, it. we're passionate about Porsche, um, but you and I, we all have come from different. You know, you know, we weren't have that silver spoon, all of us we started in either you know jdm or euro type stuff or like mm. you're doing you're working your way through cars as you progress as an adult and some people are more fortunate than others and some people can step right into porsche when they start driving i you know our story obviously when we were much younger that was not even a car that was in my realm of possibility in my mind you yeah, know and, it was on top gear but that was about it yeah i was just like oh those are cool you know they're they're badass, but I, I'm not going to be able to afford that, you know? So I might as well just work on this, uh, this Civic that I have here and be happy that I have this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, like kind of, kind of attitude. But, you know, as life changes, you know, you get, you go to, you know, schooling and you progress through life and you start making, you know, getting, obtaining jobs and doing things and start, things start to become more possible, I guess. And you're like, oh, hey, I mean, I didn't even, you asked me 10 years ago, I still didn't think I'd be in a Porsche, but here I am, right? Not one. Two, remember. Uh, I, I know yeah. you're in two I'm of them in, as well. Almost. Thanks. Almost another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, just, just stop yourself. For God's sake, Mike. What's going on? Yeah. It's addictive, <laughs> man. It's... <laughs> All right. It is addictive. Uh, to be fair, yeah. I shouldn't say this on, on camera, but I'm already planning number two, if, you know. Uh, of what it's going I to think be it's everything. just, yeah, I think it's just a natural, a natural thing. Um, and, and, you know, it's kind of weird because I've had that debate, you know, with Bart Gukens too, where there's a couple different theories behind it. I think, you know, you have a bunch and then maybe you scale down after you have them. I don't know what this, this, this perfect scenario is, but honestly, at the end of the day, 
if you only have one, you become really familiar with that one, right? And it becomes like a glove to you. Yeah. Um, and there's also another, you know, school of thought behind that too, which I also do agree with because if you're, if that's your everything Porsche that you're going to do everything with it, that's actually good because you're using the hell out of it and you're using it for everything. You're running, you're running to the store with it. You're going to hang out with meets with it. You're going enthusiast driving with it. You're, there's something to be said for that too, because that guy's getting a lot more seat time than I am in mm. either one of my cars. So guy or girl. So, I mean, it's, it, I think that's a cool thing as well. And, I just want them all. That's my problem. I w I'm not content with <laughs> just one. It's the issue. Got to catch them all, man. It keeps me man. hungry, though, right? It that's the good thing is it keeps me hungry because obviously yeah. I don't have the bankroll to have everything. So, you know, you got to kind of either mix and match, get rid of something, or make moves to make things happen, or save up, or whatever, right? Or grind mm. harder and try to make more money, or do something, right? To something that's pushing you, you know, to, to obtain those goals. Yeah, you know, exactly. So. Um, whatever you can to kind of, uh, of, of chase it and obtain it, it is what it yeah. is. But like you say, it, it's that kind of drive as well that makes it more fun. You know, it's like yeah. an achievement almost, you know, achievement. Of course. Level. Of course. Exactly. Yeah. You level up and you're like, wow, that was, uh, this is everything I thought it was going to be. <laughs> you know, yeah. when you get it or something like that. I remember but, when you first bought your 996, I was ha so happy for you, man, because <laughs> I remember when you told me that you were even just you had your eye on that particular car and you're like, I think there's going to be an opportunity for me to buy this car. And I'm like, dude, you need to do it. You need, you, you need to make move mountains if you need to, for you to do it. And even if it's a stretch, it'll, you'll be so happy that you stretch to do it. You know? Yeah. But you know, it's I'm, worth it. The, yeah. the dialysis every night is completely worth it. I didn't need that kidney. <laughs> fine <laughs> um, exactly right <laughs> but just but drink a couple less one. beers that's all that's all it's, it's no fine. i like living life on the edge you know there's not much i could do in the bang middle of the uk where i'm furthest away from the sea in loads and loads of flatlands so i may as well <laughs> just uh, drink myself into a frenzy so <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and it's it, it's interesting you know like going back to that you know you you get into the the, the porsche community and 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 for me, I don't know if it's, it rings true for you, but it probably does because hey, we we kind of create a community with what we do, and wherever if that's a podcast, that's YouTube, if that's on Instagram, whatever. But the Porsche community is perhaps the most, in general, the nicest, most open, most comfortable, most relaxed car community of. I think I've ever been a part of, um, mm -hmm. and it's incredibly welcoming. I agree with that. And, mm. and, and you and I talked about that too, even when you were, you know, on the edge, you were flirting with still entering into the community. And I was like, Hey, it's basically all of those other things without the negativity when you're yeah. at these events. And I think everybody works hard at that too, because they don't want a stereotype of being pretentious or any of the other things on the outside from from somebody that's not a you know a owner and in, in that community yeah. sees oh, or yeah. portrays that actually well, makes a lot of sense well we're clearly not pretentious i mean look at us the majority of like, us owners i mean we've got uh you know flat six rebel here and mm -hmm. we all kind of dress like we should have you know <laughs> skateboards on us and uh, yeah, yeah exactly just, right we, we bowl around like we're still like 18 19 years of I age we, we should know better <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but i think but, it also know. it's it's welcoming too right like because if you're if you're all dudded up and you, you know you got your oxfords on and you're going to a meet it doesn't show like you're relaxed you know and I'm, nothing wrong with that outfit but you know it's supposed to be a, a relaxing atmosphere it's almost kind of like if you go to the beach you're not going to go like wear a three-piece suit to the beach you should wear flip-flops and a bathing suit like you should just be you're going to chill with friends and meet people and relax I hear that. Yeah, completely. Um, but this is this is another thing about the the, the community as well. Um, what what the enticing thing about it is? I think we just have touched upon it a bit now, but going into it more, the in, how everyone so easily easily wants to invite you in. You know, mm -hmm. it's like yeah, yeah, come and try the car. Yeah, come and sit with us. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. talk about the car. You know, let's whatever and and they it's almost like we want people we want more people to kind of yeah, get every, everybody's into this. trying to build that army man <laughs> <laughs> we are <laughs> you know but 
you know, if you if we take a, upon like looking at the Euro scene, I've come from a Volkswagen scene. And although there's some uh, older folks who are heavily involved and they've been doing it since they were kids, you have people like um, Jay Mack, who's part of Players. You're probably mm -hmm. familiar with them. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And uh, Carl Taylor. Then you have the Edition 38 lot who've been doing it for donkey's years. And funny enough, their show's about a mile up the road from where I live. And I think oh, cool. AD is on here now. He's, he's watching, bless him. Uh, he's one of the members on there too. And, uh -huh. you know, they're, they're, they're great and they've got nice, small, comfortable clicks, but it's, it's still very much a clicky atmosphere. And you've got a lot of yeah. young kids who finally get mm -hmm. into a Golf or a, for you, a Jetta, I suppose, or, or, yeah. or something more affordable. And, and there's a lot of little clicks within Absolutely. everything. And you don't have... You, I've not found groups wanting to work together like you know your p car talk i'm run 11 but it's like yeah that's cool let's fucking do shit together exactly you know? exactly yeah. like let's help promote each other yeah that like I, I agree with that we have the same problem in the u.s too with our car meets like when it's cross pollinated you see the same thing like yeah. people will oh. click up mm -hmm. all right you're already friends you drove to the meet together and you're only talking to each other it's like dude, you, didn't have <laughs> you to could have done this do yeah. anywhere like go talk to some people man like and i don't know if it's just the way I think that dynamic works because it almost kind of feels like that's, that's the grain there. Like, and to go against the grain would be to go around and try to talk to people and try to like reach out to other people. Like it's almost the culture that's within that culture. Yeah. What's well, crazy. I just thought about this. Like our friend group, like my guys is probably the most diverse group that they, like shows up to one of our local cars and coffees. Mm -hmm. As far as like it's Mazda, it's Porsche, it's Mercedes, it's, BMW, it's yeah, yeah, we're a friend group, which is kind of weird, I know, yeah, <laughs> it's but, okay, it's possible, but it, it, it's it's another thing as well. I, I'm, I'm completely comfortable liking all cars, I, I love them, you know. Mm -hmm. I've um, you know, we've got a, a Golf R as a daily for the moment. Um, I've had mm -hmm. you know, mate, I'll tell you, that's the, the easiest car to drive fast, you know, but yeah. it does, if although you feel connected, it does feel kind of like you're playing a uh, like Gran Turismo or Forza or something like that. <laughs> Um, maybe I'd probably be on track a little bit more often than uh, coming off the track so often like when we yeah. play. There um, you go. <laughs> but, you know, I, I appreciate everything. I still love Hondas. I, I have, of course. You know, I, I appreciate Fords, you know. I, mm -hmm. I know it's, in, in America, you shouldn't, especially the Porsche scene, everyone looks at people with uh, Camaros and Mustangs with sort of yeah. gritted teeth and like, uh. <laughs> um, but, I, I still think they're cool you know i still yeah like them. no I, yeah. Do, I do too i i appreciate all of the groups and and that's yeah. the thing is like because i've had almost every different kind of make and model of you know prior to a porsche or anything like that and are they is porsche always the answer and always the best car i mean who knows to each their own it's it, no no that's not the right answer you know maybe whatever works for you but i i agree circling back to what you're saying as far as the community goes once you or even flirting with trying to do it, I think it's very welcoming. And, and if you're one of those people who enjoys camaraderie, you're going to really gravitate towards Porsche because of that, because there is a lot of camaraderie. And it also helps that there's a lot of events surrounding Porsche as well, because it's, you know, even more, all the shows, probably. all of the stuff, it's, you wouldn't think, you know, and I guess they're kind of a niche brand if you think about it. Granted, they've sold higher volumes of cars than i don't know a lamborghini or ferrari but it's still a very smaller volume car that it's sold compared to a, a volkswagen group or any of those other groups or a ford or whatever those groups hundreds of thousands of cars where they can get together and they can do these things but porsche people come out strong when there's an event because mm. they want to support the event because they know if they don't show then the event's not going to last well yeah, yeah i mean you know, people come far and wide for events. Uh, bloody hell, me, Rob, Richard, uh, yeah. his, you his guys wife all come and the daughter. UK? Yeah, yeah Vix, you know, we all came over because, you know, we... Well, to be fair, I wanted to see if I can get into the drug trade and it failed very miserably <laughs> um, in Miami. However, yeah, on the plus side, I did find out those those little coffees, what they're called, cafecitas. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Those are good. <laughs> if, you, if anyone in the UK knows where to get a cafecita, please let me know because that stuff is, is liquid crack. It's amazing. It is. Yeah. But like I you say, one of those. I, 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 I want to go to DRT. I wanted to make it an annual thing for me because I love it. It's, it's a great buzz, as you say. 
Mm-hmm. I suppose going backwards a little bit, what I want to try and sort of uh, bounce about with you guys is what makes us as Porsche folk more relaxed about all the brands and all scenes versus, you know, a lot of other scenes where they tend to be a lot more clicky and, and sort of I, I would say, I would say that's probably more of a contentment that we have a Porsche. I don't know. I mean, uh, that's, <laughs> we like it. Yeah. We, I mean, it's, we know that we've a quiet tried, confidence we, almost. We've tried everything else. We're not, I'm not trying to race the guy next to me just because he's in whatever he does. I don't know. I'd, I'd say, I think that's some of that. I mean, where, like Mike was saying, he, if he's had everything else, then he's had the Porsche and kind of stop there. Then, okay. Yeah. But well, we can respect something that's built clean or did their own way, or has their own type of effect on it. Mm. And it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not like we have to hate it because it's not a Porsche. Yeah. Yeah. No. I think a lot of it too, it, just because I've been in those groups and I've actually gone to events, obviously younger, and I'm sure a lot of people listening and watching have done the same thing. Um, I think it is at the point where if you're, I think it's a part of contention as well. Like your goal, you wanted to get a Porsche. You have one now, right? Now it's not like, okay, you're already talking about a next one. So you're thinking about all these other things. It's not like, oh, I've just got that and I'm done. But now you've kind of gotten to the point where you're evolving your mind within the Porsche brand. And you're not even like hearing the white noise outside of Porsche, it seems like. Like once you get in, you're like, once you're there, you're just kind of like, I'm good, man. I've got my 911. I hopefully I can get another one someday or whatever mm-hmm. you want to get. And I'm not even looking outside the brand, you know, because you feel comfortable. I guess you're, you feel like you're at home. You feel like you, I've got the car that I need. As opposed to like when you're younger, let's all be honest. Like if I'm driving a Honda, I'm always trying to shoot up. I was like, man, someday maybe I can get a GTR. And then you get a GTR and you're like, oh my God, I have a GTR now. So maybe, maybe I can upgrade to something else, you know, and whatever the fill in the blank. So you're always chasing the next upgrade or level up. But I feel like with Porsche, you're not, you're just trying to level up within Porsche. You're like, oh, I want to get a GT3 now. And it's like, instead of a next different car, I think that's kind of the, the theory behind it, I guess. Maybe that's why everybody's kind of calm and just collective. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, you know, now I've got the 996. It's not the most. I've, I've got a C2, 300 horsepower. It should have been 300 horsepower from the factory. It's probably a little less now because of age and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's more than sufficient for me. You know, it's got everything I, I would want in a car. And I'm, mm-hmm. like you say, content, like, like Aaron mentioned, you know, yeah. completely content in, in, in this vehicle, you know, as it is, you know maybe change a few more things on it which you know i'm going in, in the middle of doing yeah. but nothing like dramatic i'm not going to stick with like a bolt on a turbo or anything like that i don't need to i don't need to prove anything for me it's exactly it's a feeling it's it's like a, a kinest is a, a very much a feeling you know when you drive this car yeah. and, and everything that incorporates as well you know how important do you think it is then to own a porsche and still be part of the community can you without a porsche of course i think you can be like we know tons of people that don't own porsches like brandon for example he doesn't own a porsche though in in fort lauderdale he comes Mm. to all the porsche stuff still he goes to all the racing like i wish there were more people like that actually such a good kid i really like him he's such a good guy and he's super knowledgeable he does a lot of like racing you know and it's one of those things just because you don't own it doesn't mean you're not going to own one someday right so i think it still would be who of you to still go to these events and still hang out with the crowds and like it's not like no one's going to talk to you because you don't have a porsche clearly that doesn't happen with brandon we're not like don't come here because you don't have a porsche (laughs) (laughs) so where's your porsche oh exactly exactly (laughs) like nobody talks trash you know everybody's like dude well when you do like what are you thinking about when you do want to get one? It's like, uh, you know, that's where that conversation goes now. And I think everybody who even has one still respects that mm. because they're just like, oh, that's cool. You you want to get whatever 911 or whatever Porsche that is, fill in the blank. And and, you're, and you want to see them get that car too. It's almost kind of like your friend obtaining their goals and like doing well yeah. or, you know, doing what it needs to take to make that happen. And you're like, hell yeah, man. That's awesome that you told me three years ago you were going to buy that car and then you bought it finally you know it's like cool now you can ride with us too even you know like when we go through the drives you know not just see you at the event yeah it's very true you know uh, and almost it becomes more of an interesting story about how you got there 
mm-hmm. pre having it you know all the times you may have experienced something as a passenger or just as a viewer seeing cars fly past or, or going to events and stuff like this it, yeah that, i would say for anybody who's on like on that fence who feels like well they won't i won't it doesn't make sense for me to go to that because i don't own the car or i i think you're really selling yourself short by not participating in the community even if you enjoy porsche as a whole and even if you don't own one um because honestly i would i don't know what the percentage would be but you're the only thing you're missing is basically the ownerships part of it not driving the car which are big pieces but you're gonna you can participate in the social element of it where you can go out to the events you can see other cars you can get ideas for maybe a car you want to build someday or whatever Mm -hmm. so i think it and then you can start you already have friendships built and then you have a car ready. You don't need to start building relationships after you get the car. You already have them. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I, I kind of felt that anyway, I, because I started run 11 before I had the nine eleven, you know, mm-hmm. and I still was made to feel welcome. I was still made to feel like very much part of it. Um, but just for it coming from me may not mean much, but when there's more people saying exactly the same thing as I believe in, yeah. Hopefully, it will entice more people to come in and go, yeah, do you know what? I'll try this. Actually, I will get involved. Yeah. And, and, you know, touching upon that as well, it feels like, and I remember you mentioned this, and the, the, the changing of the guard, uh, I suppose, was the, uh, the, yeah. the, the term you used. Yeah. And it's starting to in the UK. Okay. Um, and when I say the guard, I'm talking about what people may seem as the typical Porsche owner, you know, Porsche motorsport jacket, nothing bad about it. They, they are completely yeah. into the brand as such, but almost old money. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. You know, maybe the, maybe the, uh, if you want to be, you know, we'll be nice and call them the veterans of the Porsche scene, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think the so. senior tour. Yeah, there's a, yeah, you know they're they're like the Rolling Stones. Where exactly where kind of still like touring, bro. Still getting direction. after it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe with a bit more facial hair. Uh, exactly right. Yeah, um, but but in in America, in the US, I've noticed as well when I was out there and and through various social media outlets, it feels like there is a real continuation of how we used to mess about with cars with. Mm-hmm. You know, JDM stuff, Hondas, Nissans, um, Mitsubishis, uh, and also the Euro scene with VWs and BMWs, and just continuing that kind of level of customization and that level of um, messing around with cars, but in yeah. Porsche now. Um, mm-hmm. You know, how have you seen that affect the veterans within the the scene, and has that changed them at all, or has that has that made them? more challenging or, or what? I don't, I don't know that they've adapted to that. I think they're still doing, I mean, Mike and I kind of had this conversation about this purist, I guess, type sense. And I guess I, from, from my perspective, I'm okay with it. If you want to keep it as stock as it was from the factory, same type, whatever you want to, you know, as much as you want to be. But my view on that is there's a museum. They have all the perfection there you could possibly want to see. You, you can go visit any time. Um, but and are those you, are the real blue chip cars. museum. And those and matching are numbers. You really, exa- exactly. Zero, zero, zero number zero, or maybe a prototype of the car. Mm-hmm. Are you really enjoying the car to its fullest? Because yes, the car is good, but it's been thirty years. There's technology that's happened. Mm-hmm. You can you can deviate from the plan a little bit and maybe have you know ten x the fun. Yeah. Yeah. It, I think. That, um, I think it, it's. It's kind of a shame, and, and I've seen it both ways, to be honest with you, Sean. I've seen there are Porsche veterans that are welcoming to the new people to the community uh, that do like to do the mods and all that kind of stuff, and they're adapting um, to those new folks. And then I'm also seeing it where people aren't adapting to, where they want to do their own thing, which is also fair. But I think with even in the community, and this is going to contradict what we talked about earlier about uni, uh, you know unifying and being welcoming and all that kind of stuff because there is a little bit of divide when there is an event and it's you know everybody's all welcoming no one's like openly nasty with each other but you can tell that those people just keep to themselves like they don't 
they don't want to screw around and like look at the modified cars like they just they don't even stop they keep walking by because they're just like they don't get it or they or they think we don't get it one of the two so there's <laughs> there's just no communication it's happening there both sides but what's happening at those events is they're being phased out and what i mean by that is each time you know each calendar year that event whatever it may be rolls over there's more people like us and less people like them um and I don't know if that's just a purely a, a, an age thing because maybe they just you know can't make it or if they're just phasing off the earth. I don't know what's happening there, but um, <laughs> but it, yeah, easy, either way, um, and it kind of makes me a little sad though because you know, and and I agree with it's your car; you get to do it whatever you want, you know. And I do talk shit, but I have fun, and it's all it's all in fun. There's no negativity when I'm like, "Hey, you're wiping your car with a diaper," like, dude, like you got to still drive it home too, like you know, like I'm just joking around because I guess for me the fun part of it is getting together with my friends and driving, right? Like yes. the events are cool, but it's there. It's basically just an area for us to talk about where we're going to go later or drive yeah. or whatever. It's just an excuse to go somewhere and maybe see some other cars that you don't see that often. And it's like, all right, cool, let's get out of here and go for a drive. So yeah. rarely do we ever go to an event and we stay the entire time. And if you are trapped at the event the entire time, I make sure that I'm not – parked inside the event so i can yeah. leave when i want to leave so i can go drive because most of the time again there's a conversation of let's just go drive somewhere and i think for me i know everybody and they, you know even outside of porsche there's just people who are like to collect things whether they're trinkets you know your thing is to collect stamps or whatever it is and i feel like people do that with cars too and people are doing that with porsches where they just want to acquire a bunch of them but they don't want to drive them so you're more of a, I don't, I wouldn't collect, I would call them collectors, not enthusiasts because you're just enthusiastic about collecting. You're not, <laughs> you're not really enthusiastic about driving essentially. Do you think that those collectors may have inadvertently diluted the community then in some effect? Because, you know, as from, from as far as I can remember, I've seen, Porsches that were modified even back when they weren't worth much. You know, if we talk about mm -hmm. the, the 80s, there were how many SCs yeah. and how many, you know, long noses that were converted to, to flat nose and those, cars. And those same groups of people we were talking about still bastardized those people too for doing that back in the 80s. But those people that who did that stuff back when it was relevant and in the 80s, those are the people that have adapted today to us because they see a lot of us in them. You know, when they were young, you're like, I used to do that to 911s when I was your age and I had an 80s 911 in yeah, the and, 80s. And that's the thing, you know, this is not something new. It's not pe people haven't just started thinking, well, I've run out of regular Euro shit boxes to fuck up. So what am I going to look yeah. at now? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Exactly. Porsche. Get in there. Exactly. <laughs> It's not like, that, I'm going to put air ride on this and dump it on its ass. And then everyone's going to hate me. It's going to be a hot boy car. And I'm going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get so many likes. Girls are going to love me. And then all they exactly. get is do it's like having a beard, isn't it? And Aaron knows exactly what I mean. You know, you get a beard, nice beard think, I'm going to look, you know, <laughs> dashing. And then suddenly you just get all these guys going, man, that's an amazing beard. And you're like, okay, exactly. I have a girlfriend. I'm really sorry. You know, yeah, this, exactly. This is hugely awkward now. Um, but, you know, it's not a new thing. Modification is not a new thing. Even no. way, way, way back, the whole point of having a, a 356 was to have a, a car that you can use daily and at the weekend you can take it to the track, which mm -hmm. meant you were able to kind of faff about with it to make it track ready for the day and then finish with it, raise it up, or do whatever you need Absolutely. to and drive back. So these collectors, you know, do you think they may have like caused this this almost friction with the whole... Oh, we've got to have um, matching numbers. We've got to ensure there's the original paint. We've got to, uh, you know, make sure that those are the the, the correct yeah. indicators. You know, everything. Have they caused I think that, like, that friction? I think indirectly, yeah. Um, I think there is some there, and I think it maybe it's just it's back to maybe there's some type of disorder going on. They're not trying to like get deep into that, but like you know how it is. Like some people are very OCD about things, where they just kind of like want everything perfect. It has to be this way. It has to be the way it left. And to each their own. If that's what you're game is okay cool but i do think i circling back to your question i do think possibly um indirectly you know i'm sure they didn't set out to do that but mm -hmm. i think it does 
you know, it's, it's almost, it, it, and I hate using this word, but I'm going to use it. It's more kind of feels like those people feel like they're the elitist in the Porsche group. Like when you go to do these events and they're like, my 87 Carrera is like bone stock and doesn't have anything done to it. And it's got 13,000 original miles and I'm the original owner and there's not a speck of dust on it and everything's in working order just like, yeah, it was. And I take it out on a Sunday when there's no one on the road. So I can't get any, it's never like, been rained on. and I only go, I shift before 5,000 RPMs cause I don't want to stress the motor. And it's just yada, yada, yada. You know, you keep, you know, you see where this is going and it's kind of like, uh -huh. Jesus Christ, man. Like, dude, this thing is, you know, even if it is a special car, which it's not, but it's special to them. I get that. But enjoy it, man. Is that, is that an enjoyful, is that, are you really enjoying ownership by, being that meticulous, I almost feel like you're driving yourself even more nuts trying to be like overly, <laughs> yeah. even though you're already nuts, but you're making yourself more nuts with your car. It's almost kind of like sell the damn thing. Like it's driving you absolutely crazy. <laughs> Bring out the worst in people. It's bringing out the worst in them yeah, fundamentally yeah. if you consider it. And that's a shame because the whole point of car being car enthusiasts is, is the, it, it's supposed to be fun. Enthusiast, yeah. enthusiastic, you know? Yeah. You're supposed to be doing that with your fun time, not being like, holy shit, I got to get the right box God. screws because if I show up at this event, I'm going to get knocked off for that. You know, like my, my attitude towards it, I was like, fuck that, man. Like, whatever. It's like, <laughs> don't judge my car then. Like, keep, keep rolling. Like, I don't – don't even ask me what's done to my car. The list is too much. I, I'm not going to get judged properly at your little show anyways. I'm just there to hang out with some friends, see some other cars keep it super chill i'll be drinking in the corner holler at me when you get done so you know what's, what's your off here yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> but, it, but it's i wish it was more that you know i and unfortunately there are events where it does get like sometimes it is hoity-toity sometimes but mo yeah. for the most of the time it, it, it is pretty chill you know you just find the people that are the chill people and I would say we're still seeing a bunch of stuff from, I mean, Pebble and Amelia are still giant events and the other concours, and they're still that. They've had a prominence for so long. I think there's still some spill off from that. Those type of people, they get into Porsche and they think that, okay, well, that's what I'm used to or that's what I'm going to see, so I need to keep it like that. Hmm. I'll drive 17 miles, but I'll put it on the trailer. But, but it, something touching upon Amelia, there was uh, a red 930 Turbo uh, on it looked either heavily polished or or chromed Fuchs with a GT2 style rear yeah, spoiler, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that car was sick. It sounded dirty. It was it was brilliant. Mm -hmm. It was classic. And from what I I put that up as a video, someone put it up. I think I think yeah. it may have been DC told me who the actual owner was as well. So okay. I tagged I tagged him in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, DC's a, a dude who's got a really nice GT3 997 GT3. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, <laughs> and you just got burned from the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Overseas. Um, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, DC. Uh, they forced me to say it. Um, and, uh, and, and the amount of height that car got funny enough. And, yeah. and I was just thinking, are you kidding me? That the whole point of it was, it was how it would have been modified in its period, almost like in the eighties, nineties mm -hmm. as such, if, if yeah. they were able to do it in that way. And I thought it was, that was awesome. It's such a great oh, thought yeah. process and it won. Yeah. Um, was I it agree. Best? Modified or I don't know. I think the, it was best. Best. I think their category was outlaw. Best outlaw. Yeah, best outlaw. Well, that was like it. Hodge. Yeah. Hodge Podge did in there with that. Um, so they even like. Uh, let's touch on that for a little bit. So that that event, they're starting to recognize, and that's the first time they even had an outlaw category. They're yeah, starting to realize that majority of the cars there or are modified. So they almost like made a category for it. I don't think, you know, it wasn't on the fly, but they have, are starting to see the turnover where it's like, okay, there's not going to be any real bone stock ones with bias ply tires here <laughs> for that category. So they're, you know, we're fender flares and oh, let's just make an outlaw class. And, you know, it's, I know some people look for that, look forward to that trophy crap, but at the end of the day, I think if you're chasing trophies and you're doing all that stuff, I, I feel like that's a, that's a, thing of past i feel like people you know in the car world that was such an older type of like 
motive to do, you know, like even when we were young, I remember like people go to car shows like, oh, I want a trophy for my Corvette or whatever. And it's like, dude, is that why you went to the thing? So you could win a trophy? Like, I, I don't know, man. I, I just never really understood that. No, I agree. It, it, again, it takes the fun away. It takes the enthusiast kind of thing away. I, yeah, because now it's competitive, right? Now you're competing. Yeah. Instead of like hanging out, you're trying to compete with the people that are out there because, and you're trying to prove that your car's better than somebody else's car now. Like you, you've turned a, you turned a thing into a, my car's better than yours because I want a trophy. It's like, not really, man. Your car sucks. And those guys who judged your car suck too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So your underside's completely clean. Yeah, well exactly. Done, well done. Awesome. You're that's running what the, that's the exact, what the mirror's for. You're running yeah. the exact oh. same ride height that it came from the factory. You know why it's running that ride height, jackass? Because they have to deliver that car worldwide, and the roads are different everywhere. So they wanted to do the catch-all safe ride height for everyone so they can sell cars. That's why it's that way, <laughs> dumbass. Educate yourself. Bring it down a little bit. Why do you think race cars are fucking slammed? There's a reason for it. <laughs> Get the bitch down. Get it down on the ground. Uh, right. I, I was wondering if we were talking about lowering vehicles, if if there was a certain someone like Drew around, and lo and behold, <laughs> here he is. There goes the, the, king, the, the king of no wheel gap. Huh? No wheel gap. <laughs> Team no wheel yeah. gap. Team no wheel gap. Wheel gap. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I, I, was no, I was no wheel gap before no wheel gap was there. <laughs> but, but, but this is it, you know. Um, it's great that cars have to, cars, you know, I've, I've worked for a manufacturer. I've worked directly for a manufacturer. So I understand exactly what they have in their thought process. And they have to appeal to everyone. It's got to be blanket. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. if they want to appeal to a niche, they make a special edition. In which case, what Porsche do is take stuff away and then add loads of money onto <laughs> exactly. it. And then, well, there we go. We've you pay more pay. for less. Exactly. <laughs> it's 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 the thieving bastards. That's that's that's, that's not mine. Yeah. Um, exactly. But, but at the same time, you know, um, they have to appeal to everyone. So stock ride height will probably mean an inch two, an inch and a half, two inches between arch and tire. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it will mean that the engine is restrained. So everyone says, oh, you know, the engine is working as perfectly as. Yeah, but it's still within parameters. They have to produce a certain amount of CO2s. Even cars from back in the exactly. late, late 90s, early noughties, they still have these restraints. You know, mm -hmm. cars in L.A., Jesus. I mean, they've been having restraints since the 70s, you know. Yeah, with, um, yeah. exactly. You know, Choking uh, them out. Completely. Um, and And this is something that is kind of dare I say it, keeps, it doesn't allow us to, or allow people to kind of live comfortably modifying cars that should be modified because it's actually nice to help them. The cars breathe yeah. better, drive better. There you go. Uh, just saw I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for this, but my story behind all that is always kind of like, I say stuff like, dude, keep them, you know, it's like, keep them perfect. Like, just keep doing what you're doing. Don't mod them. Don't drive them. So when I get it in the estate sale, when you're gone, I'm going to just, I'm going to bet, I'm going to bastardize the shit out of that thing. I was like, I will slam it on its nuts. We'll open it all the way up. And then that car is going to be living its best life that ever. So and I'm going to drive it naked as well and not wash for exactly. days before. Exactly. exactly. Have a nice day. Sticker bomb the shit out of it like some like skateboard <laughs> hoonigan. It's going to be in, Yeah. It's going to be everywhere. It's like, damn, they're going to really fuck that car up, man. It only had like 7,000 miles when he had on it. He's like, dude, I put 7,000 miles on it last month. <laughs> and, and that's it. It, it. it should be more respect given for cars that are, you know, we have very high performance cars, performance luxury mm -hmm. cars. You know, we don't, if, if we think about the original asking price of these vehicles, I'm sat in a originally 66,000 pound car. Um, and you know, it's, it was a luxury item. Someone did really, really well in life to, to buy this, uh, mm -hmm. when it was released. Same with your 964, same with your Turbo yeah. S, same yeah. with your 997, Aaron. And, and then, you know, we're here kind of enjoying it as much as possible, but we, yeah. but we have to, it, there should be more yeah. credit given to those. They're like, Hey, do you know what? I don't want to go for a low mileage car. That car's been looked after because it's been driven hard and it's still going. Yeah. It's 150,000 miles. But those miles, are, you know, that's someone really enjoying the car to its full potential. Give credit absolutely. to them. You know, they should I be the ones. I absolutely agree with it. 
Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. And I mean, at the end of the day, right, from a from an engineering aspect, um, like anything, I, and I always get, it's like a bugaboo of mine or somebody asks just arbitrarily. It's almost kind of like asking modern day, like, what's your zero to 60? It's like, it doesn't even matter. Like where I'm going with this is, what's the mileage? What does it matter what the mileage is on the car? It's here. It drove here. It runs fine. Who cares if it has 200,000 miles on it? It's a piece of machinery. It's supposed to be used. It's not supposed to be locked in a cabinet to never use like it will perform worse not being used exactly you know i had this conversation with vix earlier so um i've had to give back my company car uh for my business i don't work with them uh -huh. you know so yeah, yeah. um i'm giving that back and i'm going tomorrow to uh see a, a friend of mine and he lives about an hour tops from me mm -hmm. and she was asking if i wanted to take the golf and i was like i'll take the porsche and she's like why it's like it's got wheels fuck it yeah it's got an not? engine why not just drive yeah. it but I, I want to drive it more it's exactly. kind of it's a dailyable premium sports car even 21 years on you know the 964 yeah dare i say it, i bet you could probably daily that it, it would probably oh, need a lot more work but yeah. you know to keep to keep it up but who cares you'd still be able exactly. to drive earplugs it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you go you're definitely gonna go deaf over time. But yeah, I totally agree that with it. And I've been driving the shit out of the Turbo S. I mean yeah, yeah. to the point of where it is almost kinda like a daily, even though I have a daily. Like if I I'm the same way. If I have an opportunity to take it, I just take the Turbo S now and I just mm. hop around in it. A couple but, but, couple Mercedes found out how quick quick it was last <laughs> few nights ago. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's the, the thing, Mercedes you probably slot. got the perfect dailyable supercar. You know, mm -hmm. um, the 996 Turbo, uh, let alone the Turbo S, uh, especially yeah. with all the added parts that yours has, um, was famous for being able to be driven really, really hard. And even, you know, cu you know currently, yeah. you can drive it hard at the mm -hmm. track, drive it home, and nothing's going to fall off. Nothing's going to break. It's going to yeah. remain good. I mean, obviously, you have to look after it. You've got to, uh, you know, um, what's the word? Uh you know you keep up to date with servicing yeah, and everything proper maintenance yeah, proper everything maintenance. like that but i think yeah, it was absolutely I think, I think it was one of your who was the gent he had a 996 turbo and he also had a gtr but he would never take the gtr on the track because the gtr notoriously the the gearbox would probably pack in yeah halfway. Was, that, was, that <laughs> wes? was that wes born no yeah it was. I think so. Yeah, we had that, it was that conversation back in the back, yeah, Jesus, last yeah. year, and, and to me that just made me think. You know, it's all well and good having a car that you can boast to your friends about. Well, this is the fastest accelerating car in the world, one of the fastest under a hundred thousand mm pounds. -hmm. You know, but it's all well and good until something goes wrong, and then you left. Uh, <laughs> well, that is thirty thousand pounds, sir. <laughs> Have exactly. a nice day. Go fuck exactly. yourself. Exactly. Good on. Exactly. You're just like, oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, Porsche, and, and for the people who don't know, I mean, that that's Porsche's, what their bread and butter was from the very dawn of time when they built their cars for public, you know, consumption. It was one of those things where that's what their brag was. It's like, hey, you buy this car, you can race it on the weekends, go have fun around the track, and this will also take you to work on Monday morning because we believe in our products are that reliable. And, you know, not a whole lot of higher level brands can can say that same thing because they don't you know they're caught up in the rat race you know they make these pretty car these pretty cars and there's you know they're great and they sound great but can you go beat on it all day in a track and then take it home they're like oh my god you can't you can't do that to a ferrari why would you do that like oh my god like you you can't treat that car like that you know like why why can't you like because they'll break and i'm like well what's the point then Exactly. Uh, and, and you find tend to find those owners are a bit more meticulous on things, but probably because they, they're extremely fearful of what could... I mean, imagine it being a McLaren owner these days. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, uh, God, yeah. Dreadful. Yeah, know. they're going to have a, a lot, of, lot of them just sitting around in places is what I think we're going to see someday <laughs> with McLaren. <laughs> it's like, wow, they're cool looking, but hey, you don't want to... It doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> I just can't wait to get a 12C for 20K. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that day happen. will that day will happen, and then you'll be lucky to get it down the road without exactly. it, like grenades. Forty thousand yeah. electronics. Yeah, it, exactly. Some reason yeah. it won't turn on. <laughs> We've got some questions from a few folks. Um, okay, I've got uh, a question. Oh, I've got four here actually. Okay, so 
first question is from the Ed Lawrence. Nice. And our friend from uh, Atlanta, lovely dude. Uh, <laughs> so he asks, and I think this is more for, for, for well, to be fair, it's all of us, because you've got a little bit of facial fuzz now. Uh, it's nice. <laughs> it's very cute, by the way, Mike. Uh, I like friend. to keep mine streamlined. I'm pretty active. I can't get it hung <laughs> up in anything. Pretty active. He's, Are you trying to say we're fat and obese? Hey, he's I in, did not say that. <laughs> he's in the, he, he swims a lot. He's trying to keep it. Whatever, man. Yeah. How can I grow a beautiful man beard? Um, so, Aaron, how, how, mm. uh, how can you grow a, lot a beautiful of, uh, man beard? A lot of beard products, combing, brushing, a little bit of uh, just meditating on growth. <laughs> Meditate. <laughs> Do you actually put beard products on? No, I, I have a couple, but I don't normally do it. I just comb it, brush it. Yeah, there you go. Brush and go. That's how you do use, it. Uh, you use like horses shampoo in it? Oh, yeah, the, the main and tail or whatever Yeah, it is. main and tail main shampoo and tail. for horses. <laughs> no. That's, uh, is that stuff that has kind of like the, 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 the basis of like horse semen, like taurine and stuff in it or something? Probably. Nice. No, I, I, I wouldn't know. Mike's, Mike's expert. I actually have a shower with that. I don't know. It's good for your skin. That's what I'm told. What was the, what was the name of that thing from uh, Anchorman? Sex Panther. Yeah, Sex Panther. Yeah. 65% of the time too. works yeah. every time. Yeah, yeah, that too. It sounds like pure gasoline. <laughs> Quality. Okay, so... Okay, we've got a great question here from Wistful Philosopher. And he says, Dream Porsche, Dream Brute, and Dream Shotgun Seat Individual. So let's go with Aaron first. Ooh, um, let's see. Dream Porsche. Probably, probably one of the 917s, whatever livery. I mean, that, that, that would probably be. I want to go race car. Um, there's that silver one that me and Mike saw last year. There's, there's no limit. Yeah. The road going well. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That car stick. Okay. Anyways. Go. Um, dream route. There's a, there's a road in, um, I think it's the Ukraine, maybe the Ukraine, somewhere. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but it's, we'll just call it Stel like Stelvio or one of the traditional. Oh, uh, okay. Something over <laughs> the Ukraine. I want to drive in <laughs> Chernobyl because why not? <laughs> really mix it up. Well, you know, then that radiation. Zombies. Not with not with zombies on my track. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Teach Gorbachev. That's awesome. Okay. Um, and then uh, passenger. Hmm. Flem. Want the signing. Hmm. Derek Bell comes to mind. I don't know why. I think he'd be interesting. I'd feel really nervous because every yeah. input I put in, I'd be thinking, does he think I'm driving like a dickhead? <laughs> I've, I've, I've had race car drivers sit next to me while I'm driving on road trips, and it's not. It's definitely it's like great. They're analyzing everything. Oh, am I driving, not driving fast enough? Oh, it's God. snowing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but yeah, I, I'd feel really, really awkward uh, around him. That and him being devilishly handsome, you know, as he is still like eighty odd. Um, the fair play, okay, cool. Nine seventeen uh, with Derek Bell. Bless you, yeah. um, Mike. I would probably go with like a Kramer car, like a K three, like nine thirty five, something yeah. like that. Um, Liberty up. Um, no, I just mm. love the way they sound, you know, big fireballs coming out of them. Um, oh. They just, they dominated so much during the 70s and the 80s. It, it's just a cool icon for me. Um, I think I would love to just drive that car, just to sit in it and it just be all, it makes all the right noises, you know, it's it's just nuts. You just um, come with a cocaine cubby? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Cocaine, like a, a kilo, a kilo storage where you can move it real fast from <laughs> Miami if you need to. Um, dream route. Um, I'm actually going to probably pick like a closed track, you know, like something like really, really cool, like a, just for me, not like a closed day for, you know, eight guys, but just being uber selfish, you know, just by myself out there. Um, maybe like spa in that mm. car by myself, um, all day long and just a pit crew to change tires would be pretty much the dream 
I think just to be able to go do something like that would just be sick. Mm-hmm. And then um, Dream Shotgun Guy. Actually, I would probably do somebody more recent just because um, I think he's a pretty fun guy to be around. I would say Nick Tandy, probably. Mm-hmm. Tandy. Uh, and I think we, you'd have a hoot with him in the seat, you know, and I think he'd be honest with you. You know, you don't – that sold whole thing with, like you were saying, I'd be nervous with Derek Bell. Um, I don't think I'd be nervous with him because I just know, you know, Tandy's a great driver anyways, but he's going to tell you you suck or he's going to try to help you. He's going to be like, dude, you fucking shift and like shit like stop you got to double clutch this whatever you got to do you just would be straightforward about it instead of being like quiet i think he would just like tell you how it is and i think you'd have a hoot and, and a laugh too so mm. okay good people actually interesting choices of guys okay next question if i can find them okay <laughs> oh jesus we've got a few here um what's your favorite episode of your podcast up until now and this is from Casper High, nine nine six lab. Okay. Mm. I'll let you go first. <laughs> you put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> you know, actually. By the way, everyone who who's who's listening, who's either been interviewed by you or knows the people you interviewed, are going to tell them. By the way, the one you did with with Aaron and Mike was shit. He didn't, they didn't like it. <laughs> Just putting it out there. Now. That was the this one. I'll be lame. No, I'm just kidding. Um, honestly, I think for me, I think one of like to this date, I think one of the more memorable conversations because we didn't really know them that well at the time, but our relationship and friendship has gained so much since then. I want to say it was probably like episode in the early, like 12, 13, something in that round. Um, when we had, um, Al on from DRT the very first time when we were at Amelia and we were at our like beach house house, and he came on and we hung out there. I think that was a really, it was a treat for us because we were very, very new to the game and you know, Al has so much knowledge and he's been in Porsche for so long and for him to like take the time to come over to our place to do it. And the whole gang too. It was just really, really cool, you know, and it was such an organic conversation. And I just, from that, you know, just doing the podcast, it gave, it gave us a lot of confidence as a team too, like moving forward with guests and not feeling too small for the moment. Um, and it's helped us out tremendously just from a growth standpoint, because now, you know, the people that we have on, we don't, we don't really, not that we ever did claim up, but you just don't know how you're going to react in those situations. And I think that helped break down our big barrier for us too. Um, so I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the conversation. I enjoyed the growth that we got out of it. And I enjoyed the message that we talked about during that episode. So I think that's probably my favorite one so far. I remember you guys seemed really surprised that they actually listened to you. You know, yeah. I remember that. It was like, you, you know about us? Yeah, of course we know yeah. about it. We listen to you. Yeah, so, it you, is. You, it is. It was very humbling because, you know, you're throwing this stuff out there. And yeah, we get the data back, but you know, it was, we were really early on yeah. um, when they came up to us. I think we were only probably six weeks in when we ran into them at that DRT and Jaime came up to us and yeah. was like, oh, you were oh. the guys who do the, the podcast thing. Jaime's we're amazing. Like, what we're just like, what? Wait a minute. You've heard our shitty episodes of <laughs> like you. <laughs> Loved it, man. So you're the, you're the guy who's downloading right now. The one. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're the one person. It's like no, nah. it, but it was it was really really humbling and it was you know a good confidence thing you know to, to be like there's people actually listening wow okay cool let's keep it going that's awesome but that's for me what what about you Aaron you have um, a minute in a minute to answer this before everything right, cuts uh, out so okay <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say uh, probably Doctor Brewster and just because he's a German guy and he's on the port I mean yes that's, yeah, it's cool to hear from a from an engineer on yeah, the, the end CEO side. of motorsports that's a big one. I think I think that was cool to, yeah. to really hear that they do things like when he when he was talking about um, hopping up that GT3 RS that was the GT3 R hybrid but an extra couple hundred horsepower here and there to know that thing those things happen yeah and then he cool. has a, that the time to sit with us yeah lowly P car talk you know this guy's got shit to do but he said he sat with us it, it links in doesn't it this is the whole point you know porsche does things for enthusiasts like us and mm-hmm. it seems that they pay attention when the enthusiasts really come knocking so you know you should you should pat yourselves on the back for for kind of leading the way with this um thank you no really you, you guys are amazing thank you so much for 
um, being on today. I really appreciate it. Five oh, seconds left. You, Much love, guys. It's been an honor. Thanks for having us, Thanks, bro. Yep, thank Anytime. You. Take care, everyone. Love thank you, you so love much. Love you, bro. Love you, man.